Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Happy 2024. This is my first video of the year and I wanted to do it on one of the classic kind of topics in fashion, which is its addiction to plastic. It's not a new topic, but I think we need like an in-depth overview just so someone who's maybe new to the topic coming in can understand more or, you know, you might think you know everything, but maybe I'm going to say something that you don't know or maybe it's just a good reminder. So I guess let's get into it. I think pretty much all of us now are aware at some level that plastic is a big issue in the environment and especially in fashion. I just don't think people are aware of the scale of how big the issue is. Like until I started researching this video, I don't think even I knew the scale and this is my job. I, I research sustainable fashion for a living. This statistic really kind of put it into place for me. So roughly 700 million barrels of oil is turned into synthetic yarns like polyester every year. I mean, obviously this is an insane number and it's a hard one for our minds to comprehend, but it's a good general overview of how big the scale is. We need to break it down though into exactly where this plastic is going in fashion. It's all well and good to sort of say, this is how much oil there is. This is how much plastic being used, whatever. But you need to understand where the issue is in fashion first. Because I do think if you were to ask like the average consumer, they might say that plastic has become less of an issue in fashion in recent years or brands are using less plastic. And I have a few theories as to why. So one reason why people might think there's less plastic in fashion is because of the PR campaigns that brands are constantly throwing at us to try and make us think they are using less plastic or, you know, improving their plastic practices. That's a hard thing to say. Um, so for example, you probably know one brand that has shouted from the rooftops about the fact they switched their virgin plastic packaging to paper or you know an alternative that's a little bit less good bad for the environment <laughs> a little bit better for the environment and you know this is a good step in the right direction uh because plastic packaging is a massive issue in fashion no one's saying that but it's not where most of the plastic packaging is used in fashion. And I will get onto that in the next segment. But first let's talk about more places that fashion is trying to convince us they're reducing plastic. So the little plastic tags that hang on your clothes that tell you the brand name, the price, some information about materials or whatever. That used to be plastic, obviously, and then they switched it out to mostly paper now or, you know, recycled paper. Um, and again, at scale, this is a good step because with the amount of clothing they're producing each year, those plastic tags can add up into a lot of plastic, sure. But again, it's not where most of the plastic in clothing is found. And then lastly, the big campaign they did to really convince you that they're serious about this plastic problem is every brand bringing out their recycled plastic campaign you know collection or even just a couple of products literally every brand i can think of has used recycled plastic in some form or other and again not saying it's not a good idea at scale but it's often just a scapegoat, in my opinion. They're still creating clothes. They're still creating, you know, they're still using resources and stuff. So it's not, you know, a sustainable option anyway. But this recycled plastic they're using, this recycled polyester, nylon, viscose, whatever. Some people may be aware. I think it is quite well known now that plastic is coming from plastic bottles plastic bottles cannot be recycled once they've been turned into recycled polyester fibers um so basically you're taking a bottle a plastic bottle out of the cycle where it can be recycled again and again and again if kept in that form and instead turning it into clothes which once it's turned into clothes cannot be recycled again 
So you're effectively cutting that circular system for nothing, for greenwashing, for a campaign about plastic clothing, which will probably end up in landfill. I'm just saying it's, it's not the perfect system. It's not, it's not even a good one, <laughs> but brands will still talk about it till they're blue in the face because they think that's what we want to hear. They think that they can convince consumers that they're doing more. Brands like H&M, Zara have set targets like use 100% recycled plastic in collections from 2030 or whatever. It's meaningless. They're still, I don't, one, they don't think there's going to be enough plastic bottles to fund this. Fashion is already struggling under the weight of its demand when the supply for plastic bottles is low. And two, it's, you're still, you're still creating clothes. You're still using energy and water and fat and dyes and, you know, creating clothes that are just going to sit in landfill pretty soon. It's not a solution. When I was thinking about this video, what immediately came to mind was that Adidas parlay sneaker that was using ocean plastic um because i remember thinking at the time it was really cool and thinking oh i might buy one because how cool ocean plastic was saving like a major corporation is creating a product that is making a difference but the channel 4 documentary on this if you haven't watched it i highly recommend i will link it below basically prove these claims were false um they prove that only a small part of the shoe is actually made from this like recycled fabric. I think only 20% of the upper or something. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but they also prove that the waste itself wasn't coming from the ocean. It was coming from beaches and nearby resorts. And these resorts were owned by a major plastic producer in the area. So... Brands are shouting about these kind of campaigns and really trying to make us believe that they're doing their bit to stop plastic in fashion. But let's talk about where they're not tackling plastic, what they're not shouting about, what they're trying to keep quite hush. So obviously let's do the really obvious first, in clothing. The amount of our clothes which are made from plastic i think i said before 70 percent of our clothing is plastic you know polyester nylon all these fabrics that are just the same they're just oil they're just fossil fuels converted into plastic and all that you know environmental impacts of it and there was a statistic i read that said that since the 1990s production of cotton and wool has stayed roughly the same and in that same time frame the production of materials like polyester has tripled it's just proving that whole you know statistic about how much of our clothing that we produce today globally is just plastic and i guess my point here is the brands focusing on the plastic tags or you know the plastic packaging that the clothes come wrapped in is not going to fix the issue when that clothing itself is the plastic. It's, you know, the wider problem. It's, you know, <laughs> the tag is, you know, 2% of the plastic that, oh, it's just insane that they think they can, you know, divert our attention in this way. But not all plastic in clothing is, you know, unnecessary, I'd say. It's obvious that plastic is a cheap material and it has certain capabilities that performance clothing needs so it's quite sweat wicking it will keep you dry when you're sweating whatever and natural materials like wool also have this quality but they're a lot more expensive so until a alternative is found that has these properties but is also quite cost effective then we do need plastic but we do not need it at this scale like your average day-to-day -day clothing does not need to be sweat wicking and you know, just basically does not need to be made of plastic. So I think that's the most obvious, you know, just in our clothes. And then you go on to our clothing stores. So when you think about clothing store, you think, okay, I'm going up to the register, I'm buying these clothes, I'm returning home with it in a paper bag. You know, the brand has switched out their plastic bags for paper. Oh, that makes me feel so good as a consumer that I'm seeing that the brand is doing something. What you're maybe not picking up on is the amount of plastic in the store. 
So the plastic hangers that the clothes are hanging on until you pick them up and take them home, most of that will then just be chucked straight into landfill. We use 128 million hangers each year and the vast majority go straight to landfill because they're single use. And that's insane. And we just don't think of that as consumers. What else? Also all the furniture in the store. So like the display cases, the clothes are on, the shelves, the like fake potted plants and stuff just to make it, you know, look a bit nicer in there. Or even the sofa is made out of plastic yarn. We just don't think of that. And it's a small percentage, but it does add up if all fashion stores have this. So obviously fashion has been, like I said, really vocal about getting rid of online shopping bags made of plastic. They try to send you paper or, you know, alternatives instead now. And that's all well and good. From a consumer's perspective, it looks like there's real change there. But when brands are sending clothes from their suppliers to the stores or even from supplier to supplier, those things are being shipped in plastic bags. And when I say plastic bags, like so many plastic bags in order to ship that amount of clothes. And, you know, as it moves on from each supply chain, it's probably being rewrapped in new plastic each time. So you think how many steps along a supply chain, that's how many new plastic bags are being used. And that is insane to think about. And it's something that the fashion industry has thought about. So it's not one of the worst ones where they're just trying to bury our heads under the sand. I mean, they're certainly not talking about it, but behind the scenes, they're trying to sort of think of alternatives. So Zara is currently in a bit of a fight with their supplier, trying to ask them to reuse these bags. They're not trying to phase them out. And there's actually a good explanation for that, which I'll come on to. They're not trying to phase out these virgin plastic bags. They're trying to reuse them and make it, you know, more sustainable, which is great. It's also a bit of an issue putting this on the supplier when, you know, generally suppliers are paid a lot less for the amount of work they do. It's not, it's the whole solution of who pays for sustainable fashion, which is a whole other video. And I will probably make this video, but you know, should it be the brand trying to pay more or create the logistics for this? Yes. And the reason I said before that plastic maybe does need to stay in the supply chain, maybe there's not a better alternative, is because Patagonia, a sustainable brand, we're not going to get onto that, that's a whole other like issue. They did a study which found that if they were using other materials for their bags, the clothes inside it got damaged at a higher rate than if they were using plastic. And I think it was a higher rate. I think it was like 30 to 40%. And that's just not sustainable. I mean, going through all that supply chain, all of that energy use, water use, virgin plastics, even, you know, recycled plastics, all of that just for it to get damaged in shipping, that can't be sustainable. So there's uses for plastic uh, packaging, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and I don't think that Zara's idea is a bad one. It just needs more thinking. I know I already covered, you know, the polyester in clothing, maybe more the hidden aspect of it, you know, polyester threads and nylon, that sort of material where if you're not really thinking, you wouldn't necessarily see the link to plastic. But I don't know if you remember in 2018, there was a whole trend. PVC was everywhere on the runways, street style, whatever. And people were so blase about this trend. Um, no one was really questioning it. I didn't question it at the time, but it was also like either that year or a couple of years earlier, I can't remember. We were like talking about how bad plastic pollution is on the environment. And yet this trend still came up that was, you know, literally wearing plastic and not even trying to hide it. Um, I just think that's so funny. I think that's just, you know, a great metaphor for fashion. But anyway, let's get on to the solutions. Um, let's talk about the fashion industry solutions first, and then I'm gonna go on to consumer solutions to end the video. Long term, the fashion industry can invest in new materials. So like I said, a cheaper alternative to wool 
that is not plastic, that is not so environmentally degrading for those clothes that actually do need those properties like sweat wicking. They need to invest in better materials, affordable, scalable materials. And this is proving hard, but it's not impossible. It just needs that kind of money that the fashion industry is not willing to put behind while they can still get away with just pumping us full of plastic clothing. Um, number two is promoting circular fashion. They need to stop thinking they can create so much plastic clothing and instead focus on how they can take that plastic clothing back and turn it into something new. They need to invest in infrastructure that can recycle polyester at scale, which is another major issue in the fashion industry right now. Probably it's a video in its own. Um, but again, brands don't want to put the money where the mouth is. They don't want to invest in this you know, infrastructure and technology. So we're using plastic bottles when we could be using virgin or recycled plastic clothing. The shortest and easiest solution is for brands to stop making clothes. Stop making so many clothes. This is the easiest solution. They just have to stop using so much polyester, stop using so many barrels of oil. And I will say it till I'm blue in the face, overproduction is the biggest issue in sustainable fashion. And it's the issue that brands don't want to hear above all else. They will close their ears to this the most because it means scaling down and they don't want to do that, but it's the only viable solution. So that's fun. Um, as a consumer, as a shopper, here's what you can do. So the alternative to brands not wanting to stop overproduction is you not shopping so many clothes. Obviously, I know this is gonna be a touchy one because people do like to shop these days, but we don't need so many clothes. We do not need to shop at the rate we're shopping. You know, these 500 pound Shein hauls, it's just not viable. Um, I did a video talking about my year of five last year and I really enjoyed it and I'm doing it again this year, really trying to limit what I buy and maybe you can join me in that if you want a challenge maybe you just try to make 50 percent of your purchases this year second hand or even higher um but as consumers we have the power to stop shopping and put financial pressure on brands to do better i know that this one might not be applicable to everyone because cheap clothing is you know the price point for some people and i'm not suggesting you need to spend thousands of pounds on clothing but if you are buying something new check what's in your clothes i have a general rule of thumb where i won't buy anything that is 100 percent polyester i tend to stop at 50 percent. so if something is higher than 50 percent content of polyester i won't buy it if it's under 50 percent I will consider it. And I do think my long-term wardrobe, my skin and health and the planet is better off for it. So if it's financially viable to you, do this and just buy less. It's so much easier and it will hopefully persuade the fashion industry that they need to think about their practices. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you for clicking on my video of all the videos on here and i will see you in the next one i hope you enjoyed i hope you comment if you did enjoy a certain topic if you want me to expand on something more if you're looking for resources i can help you with all of that but yeah have a lovely day and i will see you next time bye